Okay, uh, hi. Welcome back to the um, one of the one of the world's smallest uh, jet engine shops, and we're going to continue uh, with reassembly videos of uh, the J44. Um, this next series or set of videos will involve uh, this big piece here. Uh, uh, the manual refers to this piece as the exhaust nozzle assembly. This flange would be the toward the front of the engine. This attaches to the back of the cowling. From here on back uh, involves the turbine uh, rotor assembly which is in this case a one piece uh, I think Jay called it a blisk, a B-L-I-S-K as a combination uh, blades and disc. Since they're welded to the rotor disc that makes it more or less a one piece assembly. The turbine shroud is, is here in this area and then um, here we have the turbine bearing support and housing. So this this assembly here will hold the um, turbine bearing and also has chambers and passages for uh, uh, cooling air circulation to keep the bearing cool. Um, this piece here is the turbine bearing housing itself. The actual bearing outer race presses or fits snugly into uh, this little re this area here. This assembly actually installs like that and fits back in there. So there you can see already where the bearing would sit. Then there is this um, or this is a bearing retainer. It installs over all that. And it, it, this is all indexed. These holes only line up one way. I think I, there we go. So we can see in there. So um, this holds is very important as it holds the aft end of the rotor shaft assembly shaft stub shaft B. And then over all this we have covers. Um, as you can see now we're enclosing that bearing and keeping it shielded away. We also have this ring and then this baffle. That installs there. So now we have a series of baffles and air is posit is pressurized air leak is allowed to leak or come out around where the shaft goes through. There's a tiny clearance allow air to, net flow of air out which keeps the bearing cool and it allows some cooling air to form a layer between along the back of the turbine rotor. These pieces will be installed permanently once I get my new gaskets. I got some gaskets being cut. This piece here uh, is steel. It was uh, kind of corroded and it had been in a, this came from the same engine as this did, one of my parts engines. And it was in pretty good shape, this piece was, but the engine itself had evidently been stored outside and had it had some water in it. And this had a little bit of corrosion and pitting. So after having it glass beaded, you can see it cleaned up pretty well, but there was some pitting. I decided to go ahead and coat it with that enamel to protect it, uh, except for where the machine surfaces have to be contact. Obviously, I don't paint that. And this has a gasket that it contacts it. Uh, the surface was pitted kind of rough, so I went ahead and used this. Um, enamel on it and it looks better than it did although it's not a very good job because I used a brush it's kind of a thick enamel but I know it's protected now and you know it's never going to see it anyway it's <laughs> going to be hidden forever away I'm hoping All right so long story short um, this the function of this component is many and important obviously it's the back end of the engine it holds the end of the shaft in place the bearing itself is fed with these plumbing lines as we saw earlier. I'll show you as we reassemble. These lines are very cleverly tucked through this strut and they, that connects it out here to the outside world. These lines attach to the back of the bearing housing to feed one, one as we said before, one feeds an oil mist and fog and one feeds air only. And uh, the air only not only cools the bearing, but it also gives a net flow of air through the bearing and out of the bearing housing chamber. And again, it keeps any heat or gases from trying to enter into the bearing housing. We want you know that to be remain clean and 
and it's cool, it's pol relatively cool. It's air bled from the compressor, so it's not uh, anywhere near as hot as the air that would be back here. The, uh, the, the cooling air is, is uh, created, the flow is created by the outer air inductor, as it's called, that's installed over the outside of the jet pipe, or the nozzle extension, as it's called. And it creates a, a, a vacuum, I guess, I don't know, by the, the fact that the air is rushing out and there's a small annulus around. It creates just enough of a draw that um, you get uh, an airflow and it draws the air in from out through these four struts from outside, just outside air. It gets drawn in through the struts and it gets pulled in and circulates through this housing. Then there are round holes around this bearing support that that ducks it into this area and this area then is it goes through the back through the struts on in a different flow pattern and there's actually uh, a small duct that is inside of these struts so we got uh, a flow going in from the outside through the ducts they come into this bearing housing area circulate around through these holes and now they're going to actually go back through the struts and then into that uh, ducted area inside of the eductor so then and then they'll be sucked out of the back of the engine so it actually generates its own cooling air in and out that's all contained to the back of the engine kind of a simple way to keep cool air back here all right you also have cooling air of course coming down along the shaft the rotor shaft assembly inside of the um, combustion chamber inner liner that comes out and strikes the front of the uh, turbine disc and spreads out like that so that cools the disc from the front these next several videos will uh, cover reassembly of this getting it back together and having it ready to basically set back onto the engine assembly okay we'll be taking a look at installing our um, oil and air nozzle each back into this housing. Uh, we'll look at installing the outer bearing race, which is the switch. This is a self-aligning bearing, so it actually has an outer race that um, basically allows the outer, the ball bearing itself outer race to swivel within a, a third race, I guess, so to speak. So there's actually three races, an inner race, which actually fits on the turbine rotor there is a ball bearing outer race which the ball bearings ride on but it doesn't directly contact this it rides in a in a third ring which is the outer outer race if you will and that is what actually is held in, into this housing we'll, we'll look at installing that in here all right this is our trusty uh, illustrated parts breakdown manual uh, opened up to the view of the exhaust nozzle assembly. If it's from basically the turbine rotor back, it includes the uh, turbine shroud and the exhaust nozzle, the turbine bearing housing, and turbine bearing, um, and so on, as you can see here. So, what we have here, it's kind of hard maybe to see if I try to move up here. Here's that little baffle. Here's the spacer ring. There's that large cover that goes over in in cases and closes in the front of the turbine bearing housing. Here is the turbine bearing retainer piece that we're going to uh, touch up with some enamel. There's the actual turbine bearing. Here's the housing that the bearing sets in, and that's what our uh, oil and air line attaches to the back of there. This baffle is on some earlier models. Uh, the earlier models of the J44 used this little baffle plate attached to the back of the housing. Um, this bearing housing I'm using does not have that baffle. It doesn't even have the holes for it. It's a little bit newer uh, issue uh, from what I can re determine. It was uh, from an R20B. This is an R20 manual. My engine is an R24. So I don't actually have an actual manual for my engine, but there are some minor variations through the years, and they're kind of hard to find. I have not been able to find a Dash 24 manual, and uh, I'm kind of improvising to a degree. So 
you know, feel free if you have, know something I don't, let me know. Now, obviously, this is the um, the back end part. We'll get to there. Here's the large piece. That's this this assembly here is the piece you see sitting on my workbench that's painted flat black on the outside. All right. Well, what we're going to be concentrating on are all these little pieces, parts that go together to form the bearing, the turbine bearing uh, housing assembly and baffling, and the uh, lubrication cooling air lines. Okay. So there's that. Uh, these manuals are nice. They can give you show you the order in which the parts go and what if you're seeing something here you don't have then you're missing a part how's that so um, other than our little baffle which I know that if we turn back here this is the uh, the start of its des description how many of the, the pieces there should be and of course here are part numbers which really are useless to us anymore today because of the fact most of these are numbers that are long since been not manufactured some of them are still good. I was able to find a turbine bearing under this name. It's made by um, Marlin Rockwell Corporation, MRC. And believe it or not, this 307S19 bearing, I found new old stock. Uh, I don't believe they're any longer, I'm not sure they're any longer being produced. But uh, there are some numbers that still ring bells out there. Unfortunately, uh, many of those parts are Fairchild Corporation special parts made for this engine. So if you have an old J44, um, you're, the only hope for some of the parts is strictly uh, a parts engine, engine that still has usable parts. Uh, you're going to be very lucky if you find someone who has new old stock parts laying around. Uh, there are scams out there, be aware. Um, if you place an ad, you could have somebody respond saying they have parts, and they may very well just be wanting to take your money and have no such idea. They just agree with everything you say, and if you send them money, they will send you nothing. So be careful. Uh, so it really just a matter of luck, a little matter of uh, knowing somebody, getting a hold of the right person. It's like being a picker. You're a parts picker for a early to mid 50s jet engine. So. It's who you know or who you run across. Uh, the internet does help, but uh, there's not a parts store for antique jet engines out there, unfortunately. Yeah, anyway, uh, for you guys out there that are uh, have some old J44s, I've seen a couple of you write, um, you know, ask me about parts. Uh, the one particular guy looks like he picked up. Uh, uh, well, from what he's describing, it's a very early version of the J44, the very first ones produced in like 1950-51. They are um, a bit different. You can there are some parts similar, but it's very different looking engine, and it has uh, the main way to spot it, it. It doesn't look anything like mine it, to the degree. The way to spot that very early engine, it has exhaust end of the engine. There's a little revert or a little cone, uh, which I believe is used to again. It it draws air. It creates an airflow for cooling, is its purpose. But I'm not sure. I have never laid my eyes on one of those old J44s personally. I've only seen photos and pictures. Uh, several different guys have had them for sale on eBay. There's one right now I saw listed, which right now is April the 2nd, uh, 2017. Yeah, I started to say 19, what, 17. <laughs> I'm getting old. Um, but there's one listed right now. It says it's uh, new old stock. Uh, it looks really good, but he wants a bunch of money for it. It's an old school engine. Um, so for those of you out there with those, I, I have not seen a manual for anything. I don't even know what model that is. So anybody has an old J44 from the early 50s uh, prior to my R24, uh, then maybe you can, if you know where a, you could, a person could find manual for, a manual for that, you might let us know here um, on this video posting. Uh, maybe help a fellow out or something. Uh, personally, I don't know. So, it's again, part of your job of restoring and playing with this old stuff is finding parts. And maybe, uh, if you got enough money, just buy something newer. If you want a jet engine, buy something more modern where you can get stuff for it and it's still around. That's a lot better way to go, but again, more cash is needed. Uh, story of life. Alrighty.